Welcome back to The Observation. Ahead of July 4th, I'm interviewing my dad, Robert Strobel, who was born on Independence Day. He is a former educator of American history. He taught Arizona public schools for 30 years and had some of the highest test scores in the state. Rob is an amateur golfer, former basketball coach, former sports announcer at Skyline High School, deemed the golden voice by local papers. <laughs> was a trivia contestant on ABC's Paranoia, and he is currently a real estate agent and the lead guitarist of the band American Made. Welcome to the show, Rob, and happy early birthday. Thanks, Obs. It's a pleasure. This is fun. I've never done a podcast. <laughs> Did you like your intro? Yeah. <laughs> a trip down memory lane there. So, um, your birthday was always confusing to me as a child because... I thought everybody got fireworks on their birthday. And, and you were uh, bummed that you didn't get I, any. I didn't get any, no. Only for only for <laughs> death or on the 4th of July. So, it's a great birthday, think about it. You have the best, arguably yeah. the best birthday in the family, I would say. The no. Christmas birthday is tough because, you know, it's Christmas and you get gifts and then... You get fireworks, you get cake. It's a good deal. Um, so today, why, why my dad's on the show today is we're going to be discussing freedom as it is Independence Day and he's an American history teacher so I feel like you're one of the most qualified people to speak on the subject and you know currently there's a lot of political turmoil in the country. You could say we've lost our way a bit, um, we forget who we are and I feel like you have such a unique insight into understanding where we came from as a, as a nation and so... My, my goal is just not to go Joe Biden your podcast if that happens then you know just cut it down just shut the whole thing down <laughs> sorry about that carry on so, so we're going to discuss um patriotism freedom and some untold stories of the declaration of independence talk about the atmosphere of the room when the signers were signing that day what was it like yeah and so i haven't taught in five years so a lot of this is off the top of my head so you talk for 30, he's been retired for five, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> but um, the, yeah, the Declaration of Independence, so what a lot of people don't know is that we actually declared our independence on July 2nd. So I think it was John Adams, who, but he actually wrote, I think it was Adams, that, that, uh, that generations to come would celebrate the second with fanfare and fireworks and all that. And as it turns out, it was the fourth that we actually, the, the Congress there in Philadelphia approved the document the actual document that Jefferson wrote, the Declaration of Independence. And then the signing of it didn't happen until August. So it was like a three-part deal, but a lot of people don't know that. So the document wasn't signed until August. Yeah, so it was, so the, the, the vote for independence, I think it was Richard Henry Lee of Virginia called for it and they voted and that was the second, the fourth Jefferson shows up with the documents as you know, I've been squirreled away for the last month here in Philadelphia, this is what I came up with. They approved that on the fourth and that's what we celebrate. And then in August is when they actually, um, state by state, delegate by delegate, came to the front of the room. And so you talk about the mood of the room. Of course, fighting had already happened. You know, the war was going on, the revolution. But those delegates, you know, I think there's this kind of idea that they were all, you know, happy and high-fiving each other or whatever, that, you know, independence was coming, that they were going to sign it. But if you read a uh, primary source, uh, it was, it was, like deathly quiet in that room mm -hmm. as they as they approached and because they knew uh, as they signed that document that they were committing treason you know they they knew that everything that their lives you know their freedom that they had somewhat limited under England, and their uh, families um, their their wealth all of that you know was in jeopardy now and so, and I think they all realized that. Um, and then, of course, you know, a lot of those men who signed the document went through uh, a, a real, a lot of difficulty um, mm. during um, the period of the war. Um, their families were torn apart. There was one uh, delegate that comes to mind, I don't remember his name, but he was from Virginia. And during the war, towards the end of the war, when Cornwallis was at Yorktown. He had a beautiful home there. Cornwall is actually um, headquartered there. Um, and uh, this particular delegate told Washington, you know, if you need to um, lay fire to my home, then do it. And, and they did. 
and so he lost his home. He, um, I think, he died bankrupt. Like these guys, put it all on the line. Wow. And I, I don't think sometimes we really do the, um, you know, think through what they actually pledged. They were amazing men, really. Yeah, I mean, it gives me goosebumps hearing that. Like, you <clears throat> basically take my home in the name of freedom and in yeah. the name of this country. It was just higher ideals. And also, I think about this, I mean, you made the Joe Biden joke earlier, but a lot of the signers were young. These are like people, they're 33, Thomas Jefferson, all that. Yes. These people, they're not that old. They're young men. Right and they're willing to go to bat for freedom. There's that Greek proverb that says, the society grows great when old men plant trees in whose shade they'll never sit. And that's so, sort of what, Love that. it's it's so beautiful. But you just don't, they don't know what they did, how great this country has become, even though people argue that this isn't a great country, I believe it is. And all the freedoms that we have here, all because of just right. the, the thoughtfulness of, first of all, declaring the independence, and then of course later on the Constitution, it, it's just, it's truly amazing. It's you know, a to, tremendous gift that they that they gave us, and uh, hopefully, you know, we can continue on. Yeah, and so we were, we were talking earlier, told a story about John Hancock, who was a very successful trader. Do you want to talk a little about that? Yeah, I mean, he was, at the time, he was, uh, I believe the second wealthiest, don't ask me who the first was, I just remember he was the <laughs> second wealthiest, uh, and he made his money in trade, merchandise, and of course he was, everyone knows, you know, put your John Hancock here, his signature is famous, you know, he was, to, he was the president of that Second Continental Congress, he was the one who signed it first. You think about that kind of wealth, you think about having you know, the homes, uh, you know, the money. And by him signing that, it, it, it's amazing is that he signed it so large. You know, the, the story goes that he signed it so large so that King George would be able to, that would be the first signature that he would see. We don't even know if King George actually read the document. We know a copy got sent to England. We're not sure where it ended up. Uh, the English just called us a bunch of scoundrels and, you know, and, and, and that was that. But for him to uh, place his signature there, knowing that you know what was on the line there you know that that was in the in the fact that he was the president that it's interesting that there are there are people and i don't think the guy gets enough credit i mean you know he gets the signature and everybody kind of forgets the rest he does not get enough credit a lot of people actually since they actually declared independence of that congress and he was the president of that convention some not all but some actually call him our first president you know, because we 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 broke away um, as a United States from England, and, um, and since he was the president of that convention, some actually refer to him as our first president. Yeah, it's debatable. Under the Articles of Confederation, there was John Hanson who was the president of that Congress. There's, you know, you can go back and forth on, it, but he did a lot for freedom in this country. I think if we really think about those things that we've attained in this world. And if you're somebody of great wealth, um, you know, with land and, um, you know, a large home, would you be willing to risk that for the idea of freedom? You know, how far would you go? You could you live very comfortably mm. and you could continue on. I mean, there were loyalists all about. Yeah. Those that wanted to remain loyal to England, he certainly could have done that. But for the ideal of freedom, uh, he pledged it all. It's, I mean, it's crazy, <clears throat> just committing treason, making that choice. You'd say the politicians today, they get in office and they get wealthier when they leave. And so John Hancock was willing to light that all on Bob fire. Bob Menendez, we're in New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot we could, there's a lot of people we could yeah. list, but most politicians leave office wealthier than they were when they came into office. And so you have, you know, John Hancock signing the Declaration of Independence so largely in a sign of protest in an act of treason, which is not something you want people to be calling you. You know, I mean, you would be committing treason right, within, right. even amongst your community. And right. it's like just so much risk on so many levels. Right. You don't see that kind of level of bravery even today. People just are so afraid to even voice an opinion, it feels like today. Right. Right. You know, because they, want, they don't want to be canceled online or, you know, potentially lose, lose their job, but this man was willing to lose his he entire He put wealth. his foot forward yeah. big time. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I think even amongst the people that were there, being the one to sign that document so large, wasn't just a small signature, he's like, 
okay, I'm going big, we'll go home. <laughs> it's like, I'm maybe, sorry. maybe the history books, though. <laughs> I mean, that's how you do it. That's right. so you gotta go, yeah. go big or yeah. go home. So King George well, never, we don't know if he ever saw it. Or was there yeah, I believe I, nobody knows for sure if he actually read the document. I mean, he was, clearly he got the message at some point that we were. Course, <laughs> like, what yeah. was the? What was right. what was sort of that situation? Yeah. Well, the document itself was it England um, even taken as seriously at all? Was this just throwing a fit? It, it was interesting if you read the document. Most of the document, I'd say about seventy five percent of it, is is all the wrongs of the king in England. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just goes down. It's a laundry list of all the things that, how you screwed us over. <laughs> it just goes <laughs> on and on and on. If you read the document, it's kind of interesting. So I imagine if he did, was reading it, he'd probably get tired of it. We, we don't know if he actually read it. The, the job was done. And they were ready and prepared to fight. And I mentioned, I mentioned just one of the delegates, but there were many mm -hmm. who had to leave their homes. Some, you know, lived in forests and caves. There was one guy, I think he had several boats that he um, lost, that he donated. Uh, we didn't have a navy. How would we? We relied on England. He donated those. He lost those. Um, I mean, it goes on and on. You, you, you can look at all the people and how they sacrificed for what we have today. I think we need to pause and, um, and think of that. You know, freedom is a, is a cherished uh, ideal. And I think sometimes we take it for granted. Easy to think it's just freely given. It's just this, you know, it's a right that we feel like we have as Americans to freedom. And we, but we don't well, realize all the sacrifice. And you think about like, give me liberty, give me death. You know, these, mm -hmm. these, these sayings, these things right. that people echoed into right. how we became a nation. I guess at some point that's good, right? We don't want people constantly in the streets like <clears throat> screaming for their, for their rights at um, like, give me liberty, give me death. If the country's on that level, then it's probably pretty bad. But at the same time, there's almost entitlement or something that we've lost and like a loss of uh, appreciation or respect for for what people did for us. Almost, I miss a little bit of that rebellious spirit because it keeps <laughs> it keeps politicians on their toes right. a bit, right? What well, was like, Jefferson? He said the tree of liberty needs to be refreshed with the love of patriots. Oh time yeah, that's time. like hell of a that, you know. That, <laughs> bitch far, but was I everything think, okay back then? <laughs> you guys all right? I think not. he understood, you know, that we can get soft. I think in some ways. I think we are. We're so soft now. You know, though. with with that. I mean, I I'm certainly not advocating. You know, uh, you know, going out on the streets and rebellion. But um, I think he was just kind of reminding us that, that you know those ideals are important. On the note of just patriotism overall, I feel like patriotism has become something synonymous with the right. Um, for some people, when you see people flying flags, I remember I flew a flag last Fourth yes. of July. Became Very a big, proud of you. It was yeah, it got controversial on Twitter, and it ended up in the Arizona Republic. I wonder who sent that into the Arizona <laughs> Republic. I think I know. You didn't send it into the Arizona Republic. Okay. No comment. Well, it ended up in the op-ed section of the Arizona Republic, and I only know two people who live there. So um, anyway, we're gonna move on. <laughs> the flags yeah. in Manhattan, where I where I live. It was controversial. People were looking at me like I was saying I was pro-Trump, even if, or, or something yeah. to that effect. It's just 4th of July, right. and I'm running around with the flag, and me and my friends celebrating the 4th. And people were upset about that because they think it is more of a party thing. When did patriotism become political? Right? Why can't someone just simply enjoy being in this country? Exactly. And I know there are people on the left that are patriotic. I'm not saying that they're not. Right. I'm just saying that people now almost associate that, that pride with the right and what do you think what do you think about that do you think that no i just I, I believe that our freedom and you know having such a cherished gift because you i mean there are so many that have not had that yeah i was always struck by uh, my favorite movie you know shawshank redemption there was there's a scene in it where the there's an uh, older gentleman that's in the prison he's, he was there for decades and he was released I can't remember his name, but he was he was the older guy in the in the film. He was released. He goes out, gets a job. And after a period of time, he loses hope. Like he was granted freedom, and eventually he he commits suicide in the film. And then Red eventually gets out, and he knows about what happened to him, and he doesn't want to make the same mistake. With freedom comes great responsibility. And I think um, sometimes we sing songs about freedom and, you know, we talk a lot about freedom, but I, I really feel that you know, the idea of, of freedom and what it gives us, it also gives us great responsibility and we need to kind of follow that.
closing notes, any other stories or anything else you'd like to share or final notes on what freedom means to you uh, personally? Uh, so many people have it and, um, and they don't handle it very well. I mean, think about people. I mean, there's a responsibility to the rights of other people around you. You have all this freedom and, you know, people choose to infringe on others' rights and then, you know, they end up in prison. But for me, I, I cherish the freedom that we have. I know that uh, the path of freedom has been so many have toiled and labored have died um, in this country, you, countless wars. Um, you know, even in the civil rights movement, when you think about, you know, all those people that, that worked tirelessly for the idea of, you know, suffrage. Um, I mean, it goes on and on. And here we are in 2024, and we probably have more freedom in, at any time in our nation's history. Question, the pointy question is, you know, how are we, how are we doing with that freedom? You know, are we are we responsible citizens with that freedom? Are we doing the right kinds of things? Are we voting? We, do we engage in s civil conversation? You know, that's a, that's a big part of citizenship. You don't see a lot of civility so much today, which is kind of sad. It just, I mean, it reminds me of the uh, JFK quote about ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I feel like the world has gotten back so much on the individual. It's just what can it do for me, 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 me. Right. Do you miss that sense of unity or com local communities on mm -hmm. you know on that level, but even as a country, right. at certain points, it feels like there was almost this greater cause to greater humanity, like mm -hmm. to get us to the moon, to do right. these things, right? Strive like just, for the best. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I think it's still there to some degree. I, I just, I, I enjoy hearing in, in, in the information age today, there's so much going, coming at us, you know? Yeah. Um, I love hearing civil debate. I love hearing two people who may not agree with each other, but can engage in civil debate over a subject without losing their minds. What do you think about the debate, Dad? But that's, <laughs> that's part of the responsibility that we have, yeah. you know, including all people at the table of freedom. You know, we all... We all have a seat there. I don't always agree with where you're coming from, um, I, you know, but, but we need to listen to, I think we need to listen more and um, that's, that's a part of it. But let's make sure that we remain free and that we cherish our freedom. Well, thank you so and much. God bless America. This is when I sing God bless America. <laughs> you bring the guitar. Thank you so much for coming on the observation. Deck. Watch we'll American have... Made when you're in Arizona. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have to have the band. We'll, we'll do a band <laughs> performance. Yeah, we'll, we'll have you on another show. I'm sure the people will want more Rob commentary. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me.